All right, guys. Real quick, so for events for tomorrow. For events for tomorrow. I'll be here Friday. Listen, listen, listen. So Friday. Okay, I'm going to give you guys time to work on your presentations. Everybody reply to the discussion post. Yeah, maybe. Not everybody. What? All right, we'll get to it. All right. Anyway, pay attention. Pay attention. All right. So we guys are looking at the assignment here. I did add to it a bit, just a bit. I put the Netherlands in here, the Dutch. I can't believe I didn't put that in. But anyway, you'll see Henry Hudson for England and the Netherlands. So if anybody chooses Hudson, um, he kind of did for both, right? We'll talk about joint stock companies here soon and how some of these explorers decided to cross line, so to speak, try to go for different, uh, you know, sail for different countries. Anyway, I just want to put that up there for you guys. You should see that on your assignment as well. So if you maybe change your mind or you're looking to do Hudson here, there you go. I did add a few more for the Netherlands, for the Dutch, all right? So if that's something you guys want to pursue, great. Okay, again, first come, first serve. So once one of these explorers are done then uh, or picked here, you got to try to find someone else. All right, so real quick, let's check that out. Let's check that out. Oh yeah, here's a discussion. All right, we're getting some names here. Good stuff. All right. Nice, actually. Pretty good. All right. Okay. So anyway, that's what I was looking for, you guys. Uh, once an explorer's chosen, again, cross it off. Try to find someone new. And then, like I said, put the name here, who you're working with. All right, real, real quick here. Um, as we're going through these explorers, I realize we're going through a lot of names. And rather than go through vocab terms here, uh, each and every day before the lesson, I figured, I know this O'Neill did, uh, that we just create a chart for you. So we did put some of these vocab terms here, all right? Some of it is filled out. I'd recommend maybe adding to it though as well. <laughs> but Ms. O'Neill, whenever you see her, thank her. Uh, I posted this assignment here as we're going through the lesson. Okay, please fill out important information about these experiments. And this chart can help you out with that. Okay, all right, so we're not sitting here doing nothing. Yeah? All right. Good. Looking at everybody else, too. Okay, so anyway, please, please, please fill out this chart here as we're going through it, right? Again, Ms. O'Neill did fill out some of it, but maybe you can add more to it. That'd be great. So like I mentioned, when it comes to vocab terms, I might have a few here and there, but for the most part, you can fill it out here. All right, so that, you know, obviously here with the caravel, the astrolabe, the sextant, we already went over it, so you'll have to fill that out on your own. But moving forward, as we go over these explorers, right, here's a good chart, good reference point, a good study tool then eventually, right, to help you with this topic test. Can everybody access that? I think so. Mina, you got it? Nice, good, all right, perfect. You guys wanna put pictures in too. Maybe that would be a good idea, right? So if you are looking at some of these explorers, it's like, hey, where'd they travel to? All right, here's a picture actually I found online. Boom, right in there, put it in. All right, that would be a good idea. If you want to put for the country, uh, the flag, whatever, right? Uh, there might be some emojis or pictures that you can find of the flags for each country. Do that. Obviously, the date is important, right? These explorers, as they're finding new lands, finding new trade routes, right? It's important to know when they did it. All right, so that should be ready to go for you guys. Uh, again, it goes kind of hand in hand with the vocab. I just wanted to make sure you guys knew where it was at. I will grade that at the end of the topic. So once we're finished up, everybody should be able to turn that assignment in. All right, is there any questions so far? So Friday, you know what you're doing, right? You guys better behave, better behave for the sub, right? She's gonna make, or him, who knows? Depending on who the sub is, they're gonna write down notes about behavior. Ben, yeah, you hear that? Just kidding, I pick on you a lot. All right, anyway, bell ringer for today. Here we go. All right, so we did talk about Spain, but real quick, I know we're moving pretty fast yesterday. What country started the age of exploration? What country here in Europe? What country was it? Austin. Yes, Portugal, good job. All right, so I showed you that picture yesterday, the Monument of Discoveries. And uh, yeah, Portugal's the one that starts this off. 
We mentioned a little bit about why Portugal, let's face it, they're all the way over here at the Atlantic Ocean. So when you're looking at the map, that's important. Okay. And uh, you got to imagine here with Italy controlling trade, the Ottoman Empire controlling trade through the Mediterranean. Portugal is like, you know what, we're done with this. Right? We're going to try to find a new trade route, find a new way to try to cut out the middleman. All right, and then uh, we did talk about a few explorers. Actually, who's the man here that brought these forms of education, these instruments here to Portugal to learn how to navigate the open world? What was that guy's name? Jason. Prince Henry. Prince Henry the Navigator. Yeah, Prince Henry the Navigator. Good job. Anyway, what tools, what instruments would they use to navigate the open world? We talked about this yesterday. Anybody watch the videos I put on the website? No? Anyway, in the video lessons, guys, check that out. There's supplemental videos there. But what, what instruments we got? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, good job, right? So the astrolabe, the sextant, they'd be used to, use the, uh, to look at the stars, the constellations, the sun, the horizon line, and the pick where you're at. So the latitude lines. And obviously with map making, we'll talk more about that here with Vespucci. But uh, anyway, with map making, it's important because you got to know where you're at. There's no road signs out there. It's not like they had satellite GPS, so they had to figure out where they were by using astronomy. So pretty easy. All right, then after Henry the Navigator, right, the fourth figure, uh, there are other explorers that follow through. So Henry the Navigator, he really didn't explore what we talked about. He just established a school, establishing means of learning to help understand these new navigation skills. Now, what two explorers did we talk about yesterday for Portugal? And what was their impact or significance? What was one, who was one of them? Who was one of them? Go ahead, Austin. Yeah, Bartholomew Diaz. Good job. What did he do? Around the, he was the first around the uh, spawn the tip of Africa. Yeah, good job. The Cape of Good Hope, right? Oh, the hope that eventually it'll reach Asia. All right. Anyway, with with Bartholomew Diaz, he hovers along the coastline of Africa, the continent, makes it all the way down the southern tip of it, and makes his way up and sees and realizes that, you know what, the Indian Ocean is right there. All right. And that sets the stage for who to finish your job here and connect to Asia. And that too, in Chloe. Not yet. And then he was from Spain, too. But we'll get to him. Damn, uh, you got it. Vasco da Gama. Vasco da Gama. Yep, good job. So Vasco da Gama, he'll sail all the way around the continent of Africa and make its way up to Asia. Good, good. And that's where we left off with Portugal. Okay. And then we talked about Spain. All right, so I'll give you guys some time here to work on this bell right now, and we'll move on.
All right, okay. So yesterday we talked, we reviewed a little bit about Port Echol, where this age of discovery, this age of exploration starts. Again, the three Gs. What are the three Gs? Or I'll right, give you one of them, Audrina. Gold, yep, good job. So the riches, awesome, awesome. Extracting new resources. Mina, God, yep, good job. So we just got done with the Reformation topic. And yeah, spreading religion. It's important. Christianity. That is breaking apart here in Europe. And now that the Ottoman Empire is there, the Islamic regime. Well, you got to imagine, right, these countries here in Europe want to expand and convert as many people as possible to Christianity. Like, glory, yep, good job. And that's who, that's kind of what we're talking about here now, these explorers. Right, they want to try to find these new lands, these new trade routes, and extract the riches that Asia, the Asian markets have. All right, okay, so yesterday we did talk a little bit about who? Columbus, right? Okay, where is he from? Where is he from? Atlanta. Italy, yep, good job. Make sure you guys remember that. He was an Italian explorer, all right? Let's face it, Italy, are they... Are they uh, really funding a lot of these expeditions across the Atlantic Ocean? Are they? No, why not? Why not? Elena? Yeah, right? Good job. So the Mediterranean Sea for all this time, well, that is where these resources are being brought in, funneled into Europe. So they already had access to the trade. They control the trade, yeah, along with the Ottoman Empire. But at the same time, Italy was gaining a lot of riches. So they're not really looking to expand out. They're not looking to find these other trade routes around the Mediterranean Sea. They already control it, part of it. So that's important to know. So Colombo, right? So if you ever uh, hear about Columbus, his, his name Colombo actually, uh, because he was a doubt. Anyway, we just kind of Americanize it in a way, Christopher Columbus. Anyway, he goes to who? Who does he sail for? Who does he sail for? Now, Spain, yep, good job. So here you are, Spain, right next to you got Portugal, right? You see all the resources coming in. You see all the riches coming into Portugal. And you realize quick, because you're right next door, that this marketplace is important and that these new trade routes are really enhancing Portugal to become a strong power. Again, with wealth comes power, right? So Spain, not too far away, is like, you know what? We should try to do something similar. Anyway, Columbus, he comes to Spain and says, hey, I want to try to find a new trade route. We're not going to go around Africa, right? Portugal's already doing that. So how about we sail west, right, across the Atlantic Ocean? Again, he didn't realize that there's two continents, right, in between Europe and, you got it, Asia. So as he stumbles across where? Where does he come across? Where does he kind of land here? Jason? Yeah, right? So more like Central America, as we're looking at the Caribbean islands, the Bahamas, right, that region, that area. I'll put up a picture here soon. But yeah, he lands there. And how many voyages did he take? Was it just one? Was it just one? How many? Jason? Four. Yes, good job. The ships. What ships did he take across? What ships? Naomi? Nina Pinta and Santa Maria. Yes, good job. And Nina, the Pinta and Santa Maria. Good. What are you laughing about? The Step Brothers song? Yeah, yeah, I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. All right. I'm glad no one said the Mayflower either, thankfully. Uh, yesterday, I had a few people say that later in the day. I was like, no, no, not yet, not yet, geez. All right, anyway, with Columbus, okay, it was just Columbus Day not too long ago. Uh, he gets a lot of heat, let's face it, right? So when he comes to the, the Americas here, right, when he comes to these, uh, the, the, the Caribbean islands, he does think he's in India, right? So he calls the Native Americans Indians, right? He's thinking that he's there on the outer skirts of Asia. And in all reality, he wasn't. Right? And he goes to his grave thinking he was on the outskirts of, uh, of, uh, of Asia. He doesn't realize where he's at. So I think that's important to know. And we'll talk about America's Ves Vespucci. So with Americo Vespucci, well, the Americas is going to be named after him. He decides that he's going to uh, map out the Americas. He's going to map out the uh, North American continent and the South American continent. He's actually a good friend of Columbus. Need anybody? Who are you looking for? Who? She came to see you. That's what she told me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So with the uh, Americas here, we'll talk about America's Vespucci along with Columbus. They're actually good friends, good buddies. 
is interesting, right? And then Vespucci later down the line, he makes this map and cartographer, and he makes these map makers of the new world. And well, even though there's some there's this discrepancy if he actually actually set sail over to the new land, to the new world, right? Uh, I guess named after him. So Amerigo, America. Well, I'm glad it later changed his name to America. All right. Anyway, with Columbus, okay. So with Columbus, well, did he treat the native peoples right? Did he treat them great? Chase? No, mm -hmm. you're shaking your head. No, no. Okay. So as he makes his way across the Atlantic Ocean, you got to imagine the native people, they talk through their stories, through their different traditions that these gods would make their way across the water, right? They would visit them across the water. So as here these Native Americans, you see these massive ships coming across the ocean. All of a sudden, you think, yeah, these people are gods, right? All the stories talked about the gods that we, when they were coming to see these tribes, right? That uh, they come across the water, and here they are, right? Also, they're wearing what? Armor, right? So as they're wearing the armor, these conquistadors, these Italian explorers, or some of these Spanish explorers, right? These are glistening in the sun. They're shining in the sun. So you got to imagine it gives off somewhat of a spiritual feeling and right? a spiritual sight. So the natives, at first, thought these explorers were gods I and mean, giving them everything they could ask for so you gotta imagine yeah they're looking for riches they're looking for gold they're looking for silver right and eventually that will lead to a way of just destruction right as he explores which we'll talk about throughout this topic here as they interact with the native americans at first it seems like they're giving everything they can to the explorers right it's somewhat of a good relationship at first at first but then things change pretty quick so you gotta imagine here these European explorers, they see how the natives interact with one another. There is no really cohesion. There's no confederation just yet. There's a lot of wars, a lot of conflicts amongst the Native Americans. So they're like, what is going on? These different tribes are fighting one another constantly. And then, yeah, you see some sacrifices here, which it's like, whoa, what is going on? This is wild, right? These people are treating each other in ways that it just, maybe not the greatest. And then, well, obviously the sickness disease spread. Over 90% of all the deaths of the Native Americans that interact with the Europeans died because of smallpox, died because of disease, died because of sickness. So if you're the Europeans, you don't even touch them, you don't even battle them yet. And they're just dropping like flies because their immune systems aren't capable of dealing with a lot of the diseases that the Europeans bring over. Again, we talked about the plague, right? Geez, that spread like wildfire here throughout Europe. The Native Americans didn't face this type of interaction just yet. These contagions, right? These diseases. So 90% died just without any type of war, without any type of conquest. Man. And we'll mention more about the interactions, the wars and conflicts here between the Europeans and the Native peoples. All right, anyway, who said who allowed for this uh this uh, this expedition here? Who was the king, the queen of Spain? That prompted this expedition for Columbus. Go ahead. Yes, good job. So King Ferdinand of Spain and Isabella, right? Queen Isabella. Those are two names you probably should know. And I know I don't have it on the chart for you, but those are two names you should know when it comes to Spain and really starting this exploration here to the new world. All right. We can talk about Columbus for a while. And uh, I usually have a debate here whether or not we should maybe change the name here, Columbus Day to Indigenous People Day. And that just brings up a lot of hostility. It usually does. So I'm not going to get into that in detail. If you guys have your own viewpoint over it, great, right? Uh, I'm not going to, again, go down that line. All right, so like I mentioned, as we go through the notes, I'd recommend writing down your notes here. I am going to grade this towards the end of the topic, right? So I'd recommend writing down uh, these key individuals, these key explorers. We will try to get to the conquistadors today. So I'm hoping we can get to that. And you know, talk about some of these conquistadors. Yes, Elena. Yeah, you fill up ass. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. So with Columbus, he set sail four different voyages to the New World. Yeah. All right. So as he's exploring these new lands, new areas, again, he doesn't realize where he's at. And yeah, he gets the credit of finding the New World. In all reality, we all know the Vikings did it first, right? We all know that they made their way to Newfoundland, parts of Canada, uh, parts of Northeast United States, and they kind of established some trade that kind of, right? 
So in all reality, with the modern version, right, the modern finding of the Americas, we give Columbus the credit. All right, we did talk about this yesterday. Okay, like I mentioned, when it comes to his findings of the Caribbean Sea, he realizes, well, he doesn't realize that, uh, that he, he's not an Indian, he's not an Indian, and right? he's actually in the Caribbean Sea. So as we're looking at the map, here's his travel, his first one anyway. So what year did he travel there again? What year was this? Mina? Like, he did come before that. Oh, sorry. Okay. What year did he travel? Maybe he got it. 1492. Yeah, good job. And how does that go? 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue, right? All right. Anyway, so with Columbus, I'll show you the voyages here. Maybe you need a little bit of time. Okay. All right. So real quick with this slide, I was just talking about this yesterday. I talked about this uh, just a bit today here too. Uh, when he was setting sail, again, he was searching for India, searching for Asia. Right, just what Portugal had access to around Africa. Well, Spain's trying to do the same thing, but they're trying to find a new route. So as he's sailing across the Atlantic Ocean, well, let's just face it, right? What a risk, huh? Does he realize what he's gonna find? You know, does he realize what kind of dangers he's gonna come across sailing across the Atlantic Ocean? Unbelievable. What is it like they had lights back then? No, I mean, yeah, they had some candles, sure, they could maybe light a fire, but for the most part. You're out there in the middle of the ocean, and it gets dark. And yeah, the stars are not sure, but sometimes, maybe if there's cloud coverage or a storm, and you can only imagine how dark it can be. You might not even be able to see right in front of you. So when you're traveling across this ocean, the vastness of the Atlantic Ocean, and maybe if there's storms coming across, you can only imagine just how terrible and scary this could be. Anyway. Uh, with Columbus again, he sets four voyages to the new land, to the new world. And Isabel heard and were like, hey, what did you see? What did you find? And he talks a lot about the crops. He talks about the food. It's 10 times bigger than what you can find here in Europe. And they're all about it. Like, you know what? These riches, these resources, bring it back. Bring it back. So in other words, he kind of, I don't know, twists the arm, so to speak. And he says, hey, I'm going to pull a fast one on you, King Ferdinand and Isabella, just to keep going back and forth. And this is where that glory comes in, right? Columbus is really priding himself over this voyages. We good? All right. So as we're looking at the voyages, as we're looking at the trips here, so here's his first trip in red. So in 1492, he makes his way out. So like I mentioned, he makes his way to the Caribbean islands. Again, he thinks he's on the outer skirts of Asia. No, no, not even close, right? He has got a far ways to go yet. And then, as you can see here with the travel, he makes his way down in the parts of the Caribbean Sea, the Bahamas, right? And even down here, right, even pretty close to South America. So towards the end of his expedition, maybe, just maybe, he's realizing that he's not in India, he's not in Egypt. But some say that he went to his deathbed realizing that he didn't realize that this huge, massive land mass is here. Anyway, so with that being said, these expeditions, these travel routes, four different voyages. And what shifts again? Eli? Yeah, there you go. Good. All right. So four voyages. All right. New, moving on here now. So if you're the Pope, right, you just go through the Reformation as it's happening anyway, right? The Catholic Church is losing power. They're losing authority. And well, what happens is that the church doesn't want to have these two countries that are fighting, uh, finding these new trade routes at odds with one another. Let's face it, Portugal, Spain, they're Catholic. They're Catholicism, right? They support the Pope. They support the Catholic Church. And if these two countries are at odds, well, chances are, will Catholicism live on? They destroy each other? No, right? They're not going to explore them and, I don't know, try to bring more people to the Catholic faith. So if you're the Pope, you're worried about tensions rising between Portugal and Spain. So what does he do? Well, the Pope decides, hey, come together here, Portugal, Spain. We got to solve these issues here before a war breaks out. Because the whole goal here, guys, remember, is to spread Catholicism, right? Not the gold, not the glory. Well, yeah, still that too. But the main thing here for the Pope especially is to try to convert as many people as possible. So what happens here? Well, obviously with the Treaty of Tordesillas, this was a way for the Pope to try to make sure that these two countries see out of and that they can agree on terms when it comes to these new trade routes that are being found. So the Treaty of Tordesillas, okay, so here it is, is a line of demarcation. That's what they call it. So the Treaty of Tordesillas sets out, establishes the line of demarcation. So this line of uh, demarcation separates the old world, right, and the new world, okay? 
So as you can see here, when they establish this new means of trade, Portugal can't go past this line, right? They already have established these trade routes around Africa, right? Accessing trade here with India and parts of Asia. So Portugal can't go past, <laughs> past this line. That's why in parts of South America, you can see some of these, uh, these, these countries that speak Portuguese yet because they did land someone out here. Okay, Vasco da Gama's uh, trek, it did bounce way out here in the Atlantic Ocean. So it did give some ideas here for the Portuguese, maybe to settle parts of eventually South America. All right, again, Spain with Columbus, he's establishing a means of um, a means of voyages and I guess you could say trade and colonization here in the parts of Central America, the Bahamas, the Caribbean Sea. So with that being said, anything past this line here is for Spain. So this is a way, again, for the Pope to make sure that these two countries are not at odds. So they're not duking it out. So they're not fighting one another. And that Catholicism is one of the main reasons here to convert as many people as possible, the reason for this exploration. Does that make sense, guys? So this Tree of Tordesillas, it sets out the line of demarcation. Anything east of that line, right, is the old world that's going to be used for Portugal, right? They can establish trade routes this way. Anything west is fixed, okay? Good. All right. so again, hopefully you guys are filling out that chart as we go through. All right, anyway, so we'll talk about the circumnavigation here. All right, I know I'm kind of going back and forth a little bit, but when we talk about uh, Nunez de Balboa, you'll realize that, hey, we got to get across this landmass to reach the Pacific Ocean. Once we get to that Pacific Ocean, then, then Spain can travel its way out to uh, Asia, right? But there's a continent in the West. <laughs> anyway, real quick, later down the line, we'll get a man named Ferdinand Magellan. Okay, so he's a Portuguese sailor, okay? And uh, with Ferdinand Magellan, he actually does sail for Spain, which is wild, right? So these two countries that are at odds, what? Anyway, this Portuguese sailor, he is sponsored by Spain, by Ferdinand, uh, uh, by, uh, by uh, Charles V, actually. So at this time, Charles V will be the new Holy Roman Emperor of, the, uh, the, uh, of Spain. So anyway, uh, Charles V, he says, hey, let, let's try to do this. Let's try to find some sort of connection here, the Atlantic to the Pacific. All right, we'll talk about Balboa here soon. He realizes that there is a way to try to connect the Atlantic to the Pacific, but there's no real route way, right? There's no canal, so to speak. There's no uh, clear river or any type of connection between the Atlantic and the Pacific. So he's got to find a way to get around the huge mass continent of South America, right? So he does sail all the way across the Atlantic, all the way down around South America, makes his way across the Pacific Ocean. And, well, he will die in the Philippines, but his crew members will continue his path, and his crew members will eventually sail around the world or circumnavigate around the world. That's one of your terms, circumnavigate, okay? This is how you can make this complete trek, this, uh, this, this, uh, this route around the world, right? Other sailors will eventually do the same thing, okay? We'll mention about other explorers trying to establish other means of trade routes and trying to establish, I don't know, a Northwest Passage, try to find a new way across these land masses to access trade to Asia. So it looks like Spain is really kicking some butt here, right? They're finding these new routes, they're finding these new land masses, these new continents, a new world. And yeah, first person to circumnavigate the world, great. Again, Ferdinand Magellan, he is the one that gets the credit, even though he didn't make it himself. His crew members do. But he set sail with five ships, 250 men. And, well, only one ship makes it back. 18 men. That's it. So you can see exactly how brutal, right, and how dangerous this really is. So you're running low on food. You're running low on water. And at the same time, whenever you land, wherever you land, chances are many of the native peoples that you come across, like in the Philippines here, where Magellan comes across uh, these native groups, they're not too happy with them. So... Magellan actually gets killed in right, the Philippine Islands as he you know, encounters these native peoples, but his crew members eventually make it. So one ship, 18 men, out of five and 250. Wow, so you can see how dangerous the end this really is. All right, so again, circumnavigate is just sailing around the world, taking this expedition around the world. And Magellan, even though it wasn't him, his crew members, right? They, they are the first ones to do that. All right, three years too. Holy cow, three years. Imagine, right? Those guys are probably starving. 
And if you guys ever go on a ship before, Brody, right? You got seasick. Oh, I can you imagine going around the world? Man, man. Just joking, Brody. Sorry. All right. Uh, we go to this one. Magellan. Awesome. No, not yet. Oh, okay. I was just going to show you his trick. Next, you can then get to the conquistador. Awesome. <laughs> All right, so thanks to Columbus here, we have these other explorers embarking on these new uh, expeditions, right? And Spain is going to really solidify itself in the new world, in the new land, right? They're going to extract resources and parts of the Caribbean islands, Central America, moving into what we know of Mexico and all the way down into South America. So we'll talk about the Incas, we'll talk about the Aztecs, we'll mention about Balboa here soon, and how, well, the Spaniards and complete stewards conquer these lands. And that's why right, a lot of these areas here speak Spanish. Right? That makes sense. Anyway, here is Magellan's trek. Here's Magellan's travel. So as you can see, he hovers along the line of Africa, right? He makes his way across the Atlantic Ocean into parts of, obviously, where South America is. And he's trying to find this Northwest Passage, right? I get it. He's way down south. I understand. But he's trying to find this connection over to the Pacific Ocean. We'll talk about Balboa. He'll eventually cross over land. He'll walk his way to see the Pacific Ocean. That's what prompts Magellan to do this expedition. But anyway, Magellan makes his way down, and they call this the Strait of Magellan, right? Right down here, it actually finally connects the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean. So he doesn't make it all the way around the South American continent, but he makes his way through this cut, right? Through this isthmus, so to speak. Right, and he does make this trek across the Pacific Ocean. Can you imagine that? It's like, oh, you know what? Asia is right. It has to be right here. It has to be. Nope, it's even further. Right. So he makes his way all the way to the Philippine Islands, and that's where he dies. Right. And a lot of his crew members die. And again, how many ships make it back? Jason, one. How many men? Tell me. Eighteen. Good job. So two hundred fifty-five ships. Only one makes it back. And Eighteen men. So his crew members will later continue this trek across the Indian Ocean, right? Oh, wait, they found finally Africa here where Bartholomew Diaz traveled, right? And they make their way back up to Spain. Unbelievable. How long did it take? Jason? Three years. It's tough. All right, anyway, so now we're getting to the conquerors, the conquistadors, right? So the conquistadors has another uh, vocab term there for you guys on that chart. So these are conquerors. Right, so when it comes to Spain, boy, oh boy, were they brutal to a lot of the native populations as they're making their way into parts of Central America, South America, even parts of North America. We'll talk about Coronado and uh, how he makes his way way deep up in the central United States. Right, I know the United States isn't there just yet, but he'll make his way to modern day Kansas, what Missouri, unbelievable California. Yeah, he'll have this massive expedition. Right, and uh, probably the longest land wise in the New World. So, with Spain, they conquer, they conquer the New World. They take over mass portions of land and they defeat a lot of the Native American groups. So, when we talk about Hernan Cortez a little bit more later in the week here, well, tomorrow, Hernan Cortez will destroy the Aztec Empire, right, which is one of the greatest civilizations in Central America and modern day Mexico. And it's unfortunate how quick. They really get taken over, right? The real reason, again, which we'll mention, a lot of these conquistadors use a lot of the native groups, their neighbors, right? These tribes that are surrounding these larger uh, native civilizations, like the Aztecs, right? Uh, they'll they'll use these neighboring tribes to really fight up against and utilize them to as manpower to fight up against these larger civilizations like the Aztecs. So to say that all the native groups got along, they didn't, right? They didn't. There's a lot of bloodshed, a lot of wars, a lot of conflicts amongst them. And the Spaniards, well, they utilize this means of negotiation and say, hey, you know, if you want to take care of the Aztecs, this larger civilization, you other tribes surrounding, just join us. We'll take care of it. And that's only what happens. Again, disease sickness, that's one of the biggest reasons, though. You had smallpox. Right? It would kill, again, a lot of these native groups. You're all of them as the explorers make their way across the Atlantic Ocean. Right, 90% of them would be wiped out just by disease, by sickness alone. 
All right, so like I mentioned with Spain, I'll show you uh, certain maps here of these expeditions, these conquistadors as they take over these huge chunks of land and uh, destroy a lot of the ancient civilizations here that were established for many, many years. Okay, we'll focus on the Aztecs. We'll talk about the Tsar and the Incas down in South America. And that's why a lot of these lands here in Central South America, they speak Spanish because all well, the Spanish put them over. All right, we'll talk about that more, I guess, tomorrow. Or tomorrow. Are there any questions? Be good. All right. The Greek snore tomorrow. We're getting there. We're getting there. It's not pretty big. There's a lot of names, a lot of explorers, a lot of death and destruction. Oh my gosh. It's brutal.